Hello and welcome to my third webcast tutorial. Um, today I'd like to talk about computer modelling. Um, computer modelling is a technique we can use to interrogate the data from our experiments to give us um, a better idea of what lies behind the data. Um, before I talk about computer modelling though, I want to take a step back and just kind of give an overview or a big picture um, of what it is we're in the business of doing as, as experimental cognitive psychologists. Okay? So here's the problem. The problem is the brain, or if you like, the mind. Okay? What we're interested in is what's going on in here. Okay? And obviously, as you know, um, it's not a simple problem. Okay? Um, but there are ways of attacking this problem. And normally, in experimental psychology, this is the strategy you're using. You design an experiment, so what you have control over is the stimulus that's coming into the system. You then have instructions that you give the person in your experiment. And then, out of the experiment, you have the data itself. Okay, so the data or their response. Okay, so if we're talking about temporal generalisation, then yeah, what we get out is our temporal generalisation function. Now, what we, what we want to do is, because we have control over the stimulus, I, I know what's going into the system, if, if I've designed the experiment correctly, and I've been careful about what I've used, and I know what instructions I've given my participants, I know what I've asked them to do with this stimulus, um, and I have a good measure, I have good control over um, the data I've collected. Okay? Um, so what I want to do is, by taking this, and this, and this, infer something about what function is going on inside inside here. Okay? What function is going on in here at, that's um, working on this stimulus and working on the instructions to produce the data and how good is that functioning? Okay? So generally that's, that's the strategy we're aiming for. And you'll see in a minute why computer modelling helps us to put this puzzle together. Okay. Let's um, Let's go back and talk about um, the study I, I, I talked about in the lecture, um, the Weirden, Weirden and Rabbit 1997 paper, where they um, examined timing in the elderly. Okay? Um, they used lots of different experiments, but uh, the one I'm going to focus on is temporal generalisation again. Okay, so if you remember from the data they got, they had two lots of functions. Okay? So they had um, so I'll just make this a little bit more obvious, um, just so you can get the point here. Um, okay, so they had a, a, a young old group and an old old group. Okay, just to remind ourselves what we're looking at. Okay, um, and if you remember, when you examined the data, it was quite obvious that the old old people, that their, their, their generalisation function was wider, it was more variable than the young old people. Okay? Now, if, if, we, if we just stopped there with our data analysis, then we can't really conclude an awful lot. All we can really conclude is that the old old people are more variable in their timing than the young old people. Um, but it would be more interesting if we could say something about why they differ. What is it about their timing system that's different here compared to these people here? What is different about the operation of it? What's different about the functions going on inside the brain? Okay, so, what we want to do, we want to, um, we want to think about the, the operation of our internal clock model, okay? So I'm just going to pause the camera for a second and just draw out the um, SET model and then we'll come back and talk about it. <coughs> 